Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And I got a great question from one of our fellow viewers, Phil. And his question was, in my videos, I mentioned using the most prominent color channel as the reference image in linear fit in order to do an initial color balancing of your image. And according to the forums, using the least prominent channel is the way that you want to go because using the most prominent can cause excess noise, amongst other things. And I promised Phil that I would do a video deep diving into this and really comparing what is the difference between using your most prominent color channel and your least prominant color channel. And that's what today's video is. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any future content. Now let's jump on in and compare using the most prominent and the least prominent. And great question, Phil. Now to answer the question of should you use your most prominent color channel or least prominant color channel to balance your color channels using linear fit, we're going to take a look at a few processes within PixInsight to compare both scenarios. First, we're going to go ahead and open up GHS, which is going to be in process all processes. We're going to go to GHS or generalized hyperbolic stretch. We'll go back into process all processes and open up statistics. We're going to open up channel combination. We're going to open up linear fit as well as screen transfer function. Now to do this little experiment, what we're going to do is work with M16. And I chose M16 because, well, there's a little fun thing that I want to show you at the end. So let's go ahead and open up the master light file for M16. And you can see on GHS the histogram curve that it produces. And you can see right away that the color channels are not balanced. Let's give it a quick stretch and you'll see a very prominent green hue. Now if you've seen my PixInsight workflow videos, then you'll remember where I mentioned it doesn't matter which color hue you see. Always make sure to check the statistics because the hue that you see may not always be the most prominent channel. So it's a good idea and a good habit to get into to always check the statistics of your image. And you won't always get a green hue. You can have a blue hue, you can have a red hue, you can even have a yellow hue. So if we go into statistics for our M16 image here, you'll see that green is the most prominent channel. We're looking at the mean value and always make sure you have 16-bit enabled as it gives a much easier number to read. So the first thing that we're going to do is use the most prominent color channel. So let's go ahead and separate M16 into its individual channels. And we'll just go ahead and bring them down here so we don't have as much clutter. And as we go across each of the channels, watch the histogram and you're going to see the different placements of each color. Let's go ahead and rename each color channel just so it's easier to read once we get into this. And being that green is the most prominent channel, under linear fit, we're going to go ahead and choose green. Let's go ahead and give these images just a quick stretch here. And then the first thing I'm going to do is bring linear fit over to the blue channel. Here we see where the histogram curve is for the blue channel. Being that green is the most prominent, once I go ahead and drag and drop linear fit on blue, you're going to notice a shift to the right. And then the same thing on red, we see the red channel. I drag linear fit over to the red channel and we'll also see it shift right. Now we're gonna go ahead and bring these three channels in the channel combination. We could just go ahead and grab the little tab here and drag it over and place them in their respective location. So 
So now we have red with red, green with green, and blue with blue. We'll hit the circle and get a new color image. Let's place it over the top of our original just for the time being and give it a stretch. Here we can see a much more satisfying color combination for M16. And we can also see that the histogram curve is more aligned. Here's the original, and here's balanced. So let's go ahead and close out of our individual images here. And then we'll minimize our most prominent. In fact, let's put this as prominent. And then we'll move that out of the way. We'll bring our original M16 image up. Let's go ahead and reset our processes here. And let's re-separate our colors. Again, we'll bring them to the bottom so that then they're out of the way. And here we see that our least prominent channel is going to be blue. So let's go ahead and under linear fit, name blue as our reference image. We'll give our individual channels a quick stretch. Again, as we scroll across our channels, you'll notice where the histogram curve is. Let's rename our individual channels so we can identify them easier. And what we want to do is apply the blue channel to the red and green channels. Here we see the green channel on the GHS histogram. Let's go ahead and apply the blue channel. The mistake I made there is I named the channels after I assigned. So let's reassign the blue channel. And now we'll drag the blue channel over to our green channel. And what we're going to notice is the green channel now shifted left instead of right. And that is because the purpose of linear fit is to bring the other channels in line with the reference image. It's going to even out the background and the other um, values with the reference image. So being that the blue channel is the least prominent, it's going to bring the other two channels to the left or make them darker. On the flip side, using the green channel, that'll bring the values of the other images to the right or brighter. Let's go ahead and bring our blue channel over to red, and you'll notice that we shifted left. Let's go ahead and assign each of our color channels in channel combination. We'll bring red to red. We'll bring green to green and blue to blue. We'll hit the circle. And now let's go ahead and get rid of our individual channels. Let's go ahead and bring out our prominent and our least prominent. Now, when we look at our original M16 image, we can see our color channels are way out of line. Using our prominent color channel green, in order to bring our color channels in line, we have a histogram off to the right. And then using our blue channel or our least prominent color channel to balance our color channels, our histogram moves to the left. Here's our prominent and here's our least prominent. Prominent and our least prominent. Let's give it a stretch. And looking at this visually, our two images down here, 
there's not a whole lot of difference. There might be a little bit of difference, but nothing that can really jump out right away. Now, the other part of my answer when I was asked the question is, in the end, when I'm using GHS, I'm going to bring the brightness to where I want it anyway. And what I mean by that is, if you see my GHS video, let's go ahead and get rid of statistics for a moment, and then your fit and channel combination. When I bring up my preview, I'm going to go ahead and delete my auto stretch, hold and click, and I'm going to look for my values. From here, my histogram curve is to the right, so I'm going to bring it into linear, and I'm going to go ahead and move my histogram curve to the left anyway, and then I'll go ahead and apply it bringing my background value down. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what I'm doing with my um, linear fit as far as if it makes it brighter or darker because I'm going to equalize it out in GHS before I do my initial stretch anyway. And as you saw just a moment ago, visually speaking, there's not that much of a difference. Now, why did I choose M16? I chose M16 just for a little fun experiment because when we go ahead and let's bring a uh, close ad out. When we look at this, okay, once we get all of this cleaned up, let's go ahead and do a quick um, dynamic crop on this. It doesn't have to be perfect, this is just an example. We'll do a quick dynamic crop. And then we'll do a quick blur exterminator on here. Correct only. And then we'll do a quick um, automatic DDE on it. We'll do another stretch on here, and then we'll go ahead and reapply um, the astrometric solution. And then from here, what we're going to do, let's go ahead and clone this. We'll overlay that. And then we will bring out SPCC. We'll do um, SETI Astro's Find Background. Now keep in mind, this isn't the exact workflow that I do. I just want to show you a little fun thing here. Because at the end of the day, this is all about your vision, your vision, your creation. And that is the point that I want to bring across over here. So we'll choose the camera sensor that um, was used. And then we'll go ahead and choose our filters. And then we'll go ahead and run SPCC. Now, whether or not you use linear fit or not, because, you know, there's uh, some things going around about um, there's no point in using linear fit if, um, if you're going to use SPCC, and that's true. SPCC is going to absolutely get rid of what you just did in linear fit. But when you have an image like this where you get your true colors... Aesthetically speaking, I like the image on the left a lot better. It's a lot more colorful. There's, there's more to it than this, this redness over here. Now, this is true to nature. This right here is, is realistic. You know, this is realism right here. 
this is much more aesthetically pleasing to me. And that's why I chose M16, because as you're doing your linear fit, it takes a minute to do, and you get to see the potential of your data. And that's really what I um, explain in my workflow videos. Now, without doing linear fit, you can do an unlinked stretch and get essentially the same effect. But um, when you do linear fit, you're more in line with uh, the image to itself than unlinking the uh, screen transfer function. Um, but it just gives you an idea of what your image can do. This way, another thing I mentioned is right before you do SPCC, clone your image because if you get something that you don't really like from SPCC, it's easier just to pick up off of a cloned image and then go about the rest of your process. Now, the second part to his question was, according to forums, using the most prominent color channel can increase the noise within the image. And I'm sure that's true to an extent, but let's really dive in. And I'm gonna bring up M16 again really quick and just do the process um, of making our prominent channel image and our least prominent channel image just because I wanna make sure that we don't have as much clutter as we did before. So our green channel was the most prominent image. So we're gonna go ahead and apply that to the blue and the red. And then we'll go ahead and combine these So now we have our prominent channel. Let's get rid of our separated channels just because we don't need those right now. We'll put our prominent off to the side to keep it out of the way. And our least prominent channel was our blue channel separate out. We'll put our blue channel as our least prominent. So it's going to go on to our red and green channels. And now let's go ahead and recombine. So we have our least prominent channel. Now let's go ahead and empty out our workspace here. Let's get these two together. And as you can see, just like in the other demonstration, we have our least prominent and we have our most prominent. Least prominent and our most prominent. Let's go ahead and really zoom in over here and let's examine the noise. And as you can see, there's not that much of a difference. Let's go to a different area of the image. And the noise factor is not really that much different between using your least prominent channel and your most prominant channel. So I hope that you found this useful, and if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider a Hidden Light Photography membership. Your support really helps me create content for you, and there's lots of perks for you to enjoy as well, including my personal master lights to practice with. Also, that channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on future content. Drop a comment in the comment section. Do you have any questions? Have you played around with linear fit? And if so, what effects did it have for you? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.